you're watching Citizen Extra very shortly. We'll be um, live at the proceedings at the Nyeri County Assembly where the fourth Nyeri Governor Mutahi Kahiga uh, will be addressing the County Assembly for the very first time. Um, also in Nyeri County Constitutional Commissions and Independent Officers Conference um, will be um, going on or is currently underway there and we'll be listening into that. For now, as we continue with our focus on devolution, um, let's talk to Martin Munene, um, after which we'll continue with our studio discussion on the same. All right, a very good morning to you once again, Lillian from Neri County. And who I am, I am at the White Trainer Hotel, where what is happening here is the sixth annual um, independent offices and commission, constitutional commissions conference that is happening. Uh, as you can see behind me, it's actually underway. We see commissions are from uh, uh, different commissions here. We've got the Kenya Human Rights Commission. We've got the Salaries Remuneration Commission. We've got different commissions here. We've got the Office of the... Uh, Office of the, the uh, different offices, for example, the of independent offices as the, uh, the office of the inspector general, etc. Uh, and also, we are made to understand some of the people who've come here, include the chairman of the uh, council of governor, uh, uh, who is here just to uh, just uh, join these commissions because one of the things they're, go they're going to be looking at is devolution. And so, with me here today uh, is the chair of the Kenya Human Rights Commission, who's going to be helping us understand exactly what they're doing and who is here. And and what they hope to achieve. So kindly, um, a very good morning to you. Uh, uh, so what is happening here today and who is here? I thank you very much. This is um, our annual, we call it our annual congress or our annual conference as the chapter 15 um, uh, uh, constitution commissions and independent offices we have uh, a duty to come together and collaborate on, on, on matters touching on our respective mandates and also to collaborate to avoid duplicity and also to synergize our approaches so that's why we have a forum of uh, constitutional commissions and independent offices and we meet we are meeting here this year so as uh, to look at uh, how we have worked uh, for the last five years. You see a lot of the constitution commissions are coming to the end of their uh, initial terms. And uh, I think you have noticed that the SRC handed over their last, uh, their final report yesterday. A number of other commissions have also had their uh, final ceremonies. And we, are, and we have also had the end of the first phase of the of devolution so we are meeting here under the theme five years of devolution what are our gains what are the challenges and and what are the lessons we have learned to inform our engagement especially with county governments going forward we uh, constitutional commissions compress of commissions such as mine the kenya national commission on human rights we have commissions like the src the, the public service commission the judicial service commission um, uh, the iebc the all constitutional commissions and independent officers including like the auditor general's office the control of budget etc we are here because we have a mandate to work together and uh, our guest of honor today is uh, the, the 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 chair of the council of governors his excellency governor nanok of Turkana county and uh, we also have uh, the occasion graced by the by the host uh, governor uh, his excellency the governor of of, of Nyeri County. We also have a lot of dignitaries who are attending, but more today, our function today is to engage with members of the public so that we can get feedback, even in terms of our, of our own mandates and how we have engaged uh, in the past. This is the first time we are in Nyeri. In the last uh, five conferences that we have had, we, we have not been in Nairobi, we go to the counties. We have been to Asingishu, we have been to uh, Kisumu County, we have been to Nakuru County, and uh, of course we have been also to, uh, in Nairobi County. Uh, you say that uh, one the thing that you're actually looking at this particular year is devolution. So in your opinion, uh, do you feel that devolution in the country has been able to take root? And uh, what is the status of devolution in the country as we speak? I'm a very optimistic person, and uh, from what I have observed for the last uh, uh, 
uh, four years where I've been the chair of the commission, I've traveled all over the country, I can be able to assure Kenyans that devolution has had a dramatic effect in a lot of the counties. It has spurred growth that, uh, uh, that was not there since independence. And therefore, I feel strongly that devolution was and is a good idea. However, there are still challenges, and these are some of the challenges we'd like to discuss and uh, uh, speak about. Challenges of uh, issues regarding to accountability, uh, issues of uh, some aspects of governance that uh, we need to look at uh, 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 critically and uh, constructively so that we can uh, advise not only the, 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 the counterpart uh, counties and uh, a counterpart uh, county of governors, but also for ourselves. As, as independent institutions with specific mandates to see how we can work better to deliver the promise of devolution. All right, uh, maybe moving forward uh, for devolution, what are some of the priority areas that have to be looked into to ensure that the people of Kenya actually feel, like you say, the effects of a devolution in every region and part of the country? Our biggest threat to all governance in this country is corruption. I can't beat about the bush about that. But I also know that um, the individual citizen empowered can be able to hold their government to account, both national and county government. And um, therefore, there should, we should not have um, development plans um, uh, 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 developed and launched without the participation of citizens. And once they are launched, then citizens ought to know exactly what is in that plan, exactly what is the promise of their county government so that they can hold their respective county governments accountable and, and, and be able to also um, bring early alerts where there is misuse or misapplication of funds. Holding, holding uh, public and state officers accountable is the work of the citizen. And if you find Kaguiria, for instance, is, is doing something that is not congruent to my office, that ought to be brought out immediately so that it is stopped. And I think that is one of the things we can do in terms of seeing how we can also um, empower the ordinary citizen to be the to be the to be the the, the, the keeper of the conscience of, of his own people, her own people. Thank you very much, uh, Lillian. Like you had uh, in this particular conference, uh, like uh, Madame has just said, one of the greatest challenge that devolution is facing across the country is corruption. And like they say, uh, like she said, they're engaging the public because uh, she feels that uh, one of the most, I mean, of the most important uh, aspect of ensuring that uh, corruption does not thrive is when the citizenry of the country actually take up the role of oversight and ensuring that uh, the, the devolved system of government and even other institutions actually operate within the confines of the law and the constitution. Uh, that is what is happening here. We'll, we'll be following this particular conference and I uh, just see what exactly uh, the, the, the is going on and like you had, uh, one of the people here is the Nyeri governor who we expect uh, that from here he's going to be addressing the county assembly of Nyeri shortly for his first speech as the fourth governor of Nyeri. Back to you in studio, Lillian. Martin, thanks once again. Um, and just um, echoing what um, your <coughs> guest there, Martin, said, um, our viewer here, um, Vickery uh, Omwanto, is saying that Good morning, Lillian. Um, writing from Homer Bay, and evolution has achieved little given the devolved impunity of heartless looting and generational wasting occasioned by the conspiracy to pollute the water surfaces from which the society ought to drink. It takes goodwill from the national government by first eliminating corruption and subsequently devolving more. Otherwise, its gains won't be felt. And um, this is a very interesting observation here from um, a lady that's watching us from Homer Bay. And we invite you to send in your comments as well uh, from whatever county you're watching us from, whether devolution is working for you. If it is, why? If it's not, um, why as well? Tell us your name. Tell us what county you're writing to us from. Gentlemen, back to um, the underlying issue here, which is corruption. Um, and uh, you know devolved systems of government that are corrupt and therefore being this being the underlying problem as we talk about all these other you know achievements and challenges 
a lot of people feel that corruption is really the underlying factor that poses a challenge uh, to corruption, DK. Uh, yeah, to, to devolution, I beg your pardon. Yeah, that's correct. And corruption still remains such a hydra-headed monster for us to be able to deal with as a country. And there were so many documented examples over the last five-year term of um, cases where uh, county government leaders went out of their way, mm -hmm. you know, almost unabashedly. Uh, we've heard of very weird cases of wheelbarrows going for as much as 109,000. I do think, one, we have enough laws, you know, that deal with corruption uh, that appear to be very punitive. But there doesn't appear to be a collective will um, from, from government, all arms of government. Um, the judiciary has been blamed, for example, um, any time. We've, we've had very few cases. Very, very small fish have been convicted for corruption. Now, that is all the major cases that have been brought up to our courts for some reason, due to legal technicalities. Mm. Um, and, and sometimes I wonder whether, you know, um, a corruption should be treated as a legal problem, but more of a societal, a moral, and or a political problem. Otherwise, um, we will not be able to achieve much if we continue uh, employing the approaches that we are using. Um, because the people that are corrupt are probably people that are wealthy, are people that control um, the instruments of power. Mm -hmm. We have even seen uh, governors frustrating the Senate, uh, where some governors have been summoned mm. to appear before the Senate, um, but up to the end of their terms, none of those uh, actually appeared before the Senate. And when it became an issue, uh, when they were going before the IABC, uh, so as to be cleared to run for the second time, mm -hmm. um, the whole issue appeared to have been ran over roughshod. And so, for as long as the message is out clear that um, you can engage in impunity and the law will be there to protect you, then anyone that comes in, and remember, quite a number of the governors were edged out and others came in. Quite a number of MCAs were edged out, quite a number of MPs. And everyone is looking at this gravitrain. It is our turn to eat. Mm. And we do not have, in my opinion, especially at the county level, enough checks and balances. The legislative arm is not able to check the executive arm. Otherwise, they come together in cahoots and they decide that you watch my interests, I watch your interest, watch my back. I watch your back. Mm -hmm. um, the average Kenyan is probably choking in these Malays uh, not knowing exactly where to turn to your point MPA so as to have an oversight role, uh, your point governor so as to executively be able to manage your finance as well, but both seem to be coming together. And so for as long as a country, we need to get into, I don't know how we can be able to, to get into this conversation um, that actually looks for probably even extra legal measures to be able to deal uh, with this culture of corruption. It mm -hmm. still remains a major issue um, and somehow we'll have to find a way of dealing with it. And uh, even as we continue this conversation, Nairobi Governor uh, Mike Sonko um, will be at the Central Business District today um, at Kencom where he will be holding a forum to sensitize the public on devolution. We'll also be getting your views here in Nairobi County on what you think as regards devolution, whether it's working for you um, and there you have it um, the images on your screen are of the Nairobi governor um, that's Mike Sonko and he will be um, addressing um, the forum there on devolution the state of devolution after taking over from Dr. Evans Kidero and we'll be listening in to proceedings there um, which are expected to start any time now. He is already there, and therefore we will be waiting to hear what he has to say as we continue with our conversation on devolution. Um, Steve, on the same, when we talk about devolution and when we get a bulk of the messages coming in saying that um, this is really the challenge that lies uh, because um, once um, people assume power, which was essentially uh, supposed to be brought 
closer to the people, um, <coughs> it translates to what we've seen in the national government and it trickles down to the counties where you now see a replica of what it is that people talk about the national government when they talk about corrupt services, when they talk about a corrupt government, um, that we're seeing the same within the counties and therefore um, we're yet to see um, devolution really working in a lot of the counties as long as there is corruption. Yeah, I think, Lillian, uh, part of the challenges of animating devolution, I hope there will be time now to also offer insights on what governance can do going forward. But for now, there's a, I remember World Bank uh, developed a report, uh, uh, Devolution Without Disruptions, 2012. They were supposed to sort of provide insights, uh, useful insights that could inform the governors in their first term on what to look out for in terms of animating that devolution. Because they said, Kenya's governance, devolved governance framework is uh, very ambitious and therefore also consummately risky. And uh, some of the challenges they foresaw, if I could highlight a few, number one was the question of corruption. Because Kenyan psych will believe that leadership and opportunities to enter public service is also opportunity to amass wealth for personal aggrandizement. So we must be careful that we don't devolve corruption. And I, I hope there would be a survey later on up to, you know, to assess the, post, the first time of all the governors who see companies, uh, 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 counties that improved or did better in terms of openness because corruption also is a, a question of perception. Mm -hmm. You know, openness and access to uh, the county documents and the man of governance. The second issue they raised was the issue of coordination. And coordination for sure has been a real problem. In fact, what you are reading reflects part of that coordination. Coordination is at two level. Coordination between the two levels of government and coordination between the, you know, inter-county coordination. Can we say with certainty and evidence that the level of coordination between national government and county government has been, has been inspiring? Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot to be done. Can we say there's been improved coordination between inter-counties? You know, the Council of Governors should give us that kind of report. I think even that there's also room for, for improvement. They, then they talk about local capture. You know, the national level talk about elite capture, but also at the county level talk about local capture. People, the businessmen who in that counties, in those counties who, who believe that devolution must work for them, not necessarily for the people, and they, they try to influence the priorities of the county government without necessarily caring of what the people want. And then they highlight number four is the administrative challenges. And you've seen the wage bill is a textbook example of the administrative challenges mm -hmm. facing the county uh, governments. Do governors really understand that county governance, county governments are not opportunities for an, exp are not designed to provide expanded uh, space to employ more people rather than rather to serve the people? So I think if, if counties, that we would like to know how many counties have been able to have lean, lean staff but efficient delivery of service because that is the critical opportunity. It's not that county government should create more opportunities for employment. If you wanted opportunities for employment, then you would have just used the money going to the counties and retain it at the national level, then employ more people. Uh -huh. Then uh, the, the, the other issue, of course, was, um, uh, if you allow, the question of uh, future elections. Number five, the future elections. Because, you know, governors, these are politicians. Sometimes the things they care for must also match their ability to be re-elected. Uh -huh. They have to battle with, what do I do to maintain visibility that I'm working? You know, you can commit county resources in very useful projects, but people, especially people, uh, meaning your opponents, political opponents, will not, since the people can't see where, where the money is going, op your opponents can easily say you haven't worked. So there's the challenge of spreading too thin, initiating a lot of projects mm -hmm. so that the people can see the governor is working, there's a road here, yeah. there's this health care. If you could just focus, let's say, on agriculture or irrig irrigation for your first term and say, for me, I'm alleviating hunger, freedom from hunger and starvation. When this is my first term, would that work? So sometimes governors have had to balance that mm -hmm. against the practical political needs, which is also to get re-elected. So these five challenges, uh, I think the governors that have succeeded themselves in office, I think they've learned something, right. and I hope they can improve from there going forward. Good point to note. The governors that have succeeded um, while in office, and these, you know, we would presume are the ones that were re-elected. Yes. Somebody here is saying, I see some light at the end of the tunnel, particularly those governors on their second and final term, 
yes. um, because they will be going for legacies. This is Ocharo, who is in Kisi County. Very interesting because their governor mm -hmm. has really been criticized as not having done so well. Um, but, you know, when you look at, honestly, um, the governors were on their second and final terms and the fact that this viewer is saying they're going for legacies, it has not, you know, it, it's not been all negative across the mm. counties. We know, for instance, when you look at stadiums in Kakamega, there's the Bukungo Stadium. In um, Narok, there's a stadium there, mm. Machakos County as well. This stadium, you know, have served as an advantage, especially, um, you know, for the sports fraternity uh, across the country and indeed uh, for, for, for sports lovers as well who are now able to watch mm. um, these matches right within their counties but when we look once again at the governors who are uh, going for their second who are their second term now um, which is their final term and the fact that indeed um, they will be wanting to leave a legacy DK um, let's talk about mm. the you know the plus and, yes. and, and the, the pros within the counties for those governors that have actually done well mm. well yeah you're right um, there are governors and uh, unfortunately I don't think there's not too many of them um, uh, that I've done very well. Um, the issue that you... Oh, why do you say that, though? Uh, well, not, not... We know that a chunk of them were re-elected. Yes. yes, a chunk of them were re-elected. And those that were re-elected probably are those that probably um, uh, brought about development activities that resonated well. Um, with the with the electorate, mm -hmm. I think that's very important. Uh, we had governors, for example, who, in my opinion, had performed uh, quite well. I would think of Kiambu, where I live, and and, and, and the governor had done quite some bit. Um, but the whole thing was uh, towards the last hour. It got shrouded in politics, and he did not actually get reelected. So he had he had actually done well, and therefore this was politics and not because of his development track record. Healthcare in Kiambu. Um, is quite something. We had lots of even very small dispensaries that were adequately, you know, stocked with drugs mm -hmm. and 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 uh, mm -hmm. the roads. Um, it was quite visible what he had done. But the propensity uh, again for the electorate, and I don't know whether it ties in with um, what uh, my colleague Steve was talking about, public participation and really getting to understand what is happening. Uh, I, I remember I visited the the county headquarters in Kambu, and there was a. The, 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 there's a lot of um, people were very scared and they couldn't understand we've done all this but we don't seem to be able to be getting far and I really do hope that the current governor of Kabul will be able to pick from where uh, you know the uh, Kabogo you know reached but having said that uh, when we talk about stadia when we talk about all those high highfalutin projects do they resonate with the particular needs of uh, the citizens mm -hmm. that live in that county. Mm -hmm. It may be something we are seeing nationally, um, but to what extent does the Wanjiko or the Atieno uh, or, 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 you know, the local person resonate with this project? And surely when I talk about stadia, um, DK, it's not only stadia, there's health, like you said, dispensaries, uh, there's roads, there's mm. water. Um, for instance, in Machakos mm -hmm. County, uh, there's SMEs. There's a lot um, that um, the current governors that were re-elected, you know, have, um, you know, to their legacies currently as mm -hmm. we speak, and not only stadia. And therefore, when you talk about um, the ripple effect that this has on the Monanchi, it's not just the stadia, but there's a mm -hmm. lot of other things, of course, uh, that can be attributed to the re-election of these um, respective governors. And, and I agree with you. Where those development activities resonate, uh, with the locals and, and a good example you've given is Machakos mm -hmm. I could probably talk about Moranga these are areas where for example the local farmer in Moranga was able to get a better price for their milk because of uh, an intervention that directly related to the governor mm -hmm. okay if you look at Nairobi for example I wouldn't be very sanguine about it in that the governor appeared to be elitist and not mm -hmm. connected with the local population so yes we have those that have been elected for the second term certainly they know that they are not uh, 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 you know subject to election for the that term and they might uh, be interested about leaving a legacy mm -hmm. but um, on the other hand they might also be interested in looking beyond uh, 2022 
And it's possible that you're going to, to see a lot of political real, right. realignments. Uh -huh. As governors look toward, now I've completed my two terms. What, next? what am I going to be doing after 2022? Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, that may not be very good, mm -hmm. you know, for development in their counties. Are you, are you saying that most of them are eyeing the presidency, perhaps? Well, um, because uh, from governor, where, where do you go, really? Yeah, that, that's a point. Yeah. Some of them may be eyeing bigger positions mm -hmm. in the political arena mm -hmm. and that might have its own they might shift their focus, focus. from the county to the larger political you know uh, 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 stage mm -hmm. and that might compromise the development needs of the county i hope we do not see that well said and uh, hold on to that thought steve i'll be getting your thoughts on the same um let's listen into the constitutional commissions and independent offices conference that is currently <laughs> underway in nyeri county our men and women from far and wide, within our borders and beyond, all congregated today by virtue of the gifts of the Constitution of Kenya 2010. As captured by our preamble to the Constitution, God has indeed blessed this country. By your presence here today, symbolically you represent the aspirations of the people of Kenya. These aspirations are captured in our shared values of human rights, equality, freedom, democracy, social justice, and the rule of law. Your responsibility is not only great, but also special. Our journey from independence to where we are currently demonstrates the milestones we have achieved. We have evolved from the classical three arms of government to a now more robust system recognizing a fourth player and the commissions and independent offices are indeed the fourth player. Chapter 15 of the Constitution recognizes the important role commissions and independent offices play in safeguarding the sovereignty of the people of this country. But just to mention a few, allow me to recognize the support you have offered to county governments in executing their mandate. The control of budget and the Commission on Revenue Allocation have been instrumental to counties acquiring and managing the funds. The Auditor General has brought clarity to public accountability. Without the National Police Service, I doubt if we would be comfortably assembled here today. Your importance in the governance of this country is not only critical, but also essential. That notwithstanding, we cannot fail to recognize that we have faced some challenges in implementing the Constitution. A good example can be drawn from our recently concluded highly contested elections. And as the Constitution has been stretched and tested possibly to the highest of its limits, so have some of the institutions mandated to safeguard it. Areas that appeared clear now appear gray and murky. For example, in Nyeri County, after the loss of our governor, Dr. Wahome Gakuru, I am now serving as governor without an option to appoint a deputy governor. Clearly, we cannot claim to have a perfect constitution. People have now started questioning provisions of our constitution. These conversations are healthy and are appreciated in a democratic society such as ours. However, an important voice appears to be missing or suppressed from these conversations. Ladies and gentlemen, the citizenly, the people, and the ordinary man on the street, let your voice be heard. Today you have the opportunity, let you speak that you may be heard. Allow yourselves to exercise your civic, civic duty. Let us hear you clearly that we may be able to improve. I want to conclude uh, by later rating that the county government of Nyeri is committed to continued collaboration with the commissions and independent offices. We acknowledge the fact that we are all serving the same people, the sovereign people of the Republic of Kenya. Let us work together for the mutual benefit of our people. This after, uh, later this day, I'll be making my inaugural speech at the county assembly, which is a constitutional duty. It may necessitate my leaving earlier than I would have wished to go and do this noble duty. My prayer is that your esteemed stay here is going to be exciting and memorable. And for those that have come to Nyeri for the very first time, take time to visit the following shrines. 
the outspan hotel where lord Bob, Bob baden powell used to live the treetops where queen elizabeth received the good news of our anointing you can also visit our the, the teto ridges where honorable wangari madai grew up and lived may god bless you may god do you well may god bless kenya thank you And that is the Nyeri governor. We are going to be listening in to the Nairobi governor, Mike Sonko, who is currently at Kencom uh, within the Central Business District. He's going to be addressing a forum there, um, which he will be sensitizing on devolution. Remember, Mike Sonko took over from um, Evans uh, Kidero, and we will be hearing from him as regards the changes that he has uh, so far effected within the Nairobi county steve um on the same form you um the governors who are going for their second term now and the fact that they now want to leave a legacy dk hears of the opinion that they may lose a bit of focus this being their final term um and therefore this viewer here who feels that um the governors that were re-elected will actually uh bring a lot of change within the counties um dk seems to be of a different opinion what is yours i think this uh, uh going into the second term for governors who are re-elected, they're in a more better position to consolidate their legacy than first-term governors. Because, you know, one of the challenges, as I stated earlier, was future elections. Future elections necessarily means that you have to make decisions that are politically correct. You know, meaning even if you're spreading too thin, the resources too thin, so that they have no meaningful change. But if that is what you need to reassure yourself of an election. But you see, now in this final term, mm -hmm. These second term governors are able to put their feet down and say, I want to be remembered for having pioneered this county or uh, this, this project and pushed this county for 10 years in this particular manner. So they, they'll be able to, they, they, they can decide how they want to animate county specific depending on their needs. I think there have been some successes. Mm. Um, governors may not believe this, but I have a lot of respect and admiration for them because you know, you can't take for granted that just because the constitution says, you have functional assignments and funding follow functions that you will you will just get the funds and you'll just work independently they have fought for space i think special mention goes to isaac ruto uh, uh, ruto the first council of chair uh, council of government the chair of council of governors he really fought hard mm -hmm. and he, he together with the other governors they made sure that the governors have a space to operate you know, all that, those what looked at political brinkmanship, governors having, fla having flags, you know, those were political statements to say, listen, we need some functional autonomy in terms of decision making, in terms of financial uh, access of, of this national, national revenue. I think they did well. And then secondly, the second success is ease of accessibility of services. Today's Manainchi, I think in terms of, the counties that have done, well, we've seen roads being built mm. that ordinarily would take years. I think it was year. We saw a, a, a documentary about the, a, an extension of a road that was, had never been tarmacked since independence. Mm. We've seen Machakos doing really well. You know, I know people mock the People's Park, but we also saw documentaries uh, of, of roads being tarmacked. You know, the brighter side is that now there's a tarmac there, even if it didn't last long, because mm -hmm. <laughs> people are sharing photos about this tarmac was wearing off. But I think we saw a decisive, a, a decisive move by governors to try and alleviate the suffering of their people. You know, I think that is what the evolution was intended to achieve. We've also seen, in, number three, in terms of, uh, um, in terms of a quick turnaround, decision making, you know, in a bureaucratic system, you have to wait longer to get feedback on the issues that concern. And some of these issues are really, really small, small issues. One inch wants clarification on. Having a governor on site, you know, I think most counties mm. are within a radius of, let's say, uh, 30 kilometers. Mm -hmm. You know, you can just take a motorbike or cycle to the county government and maybe there'll, there'll be a liaison officer there who can communicate to you, give you responses. Or if you don't want to go there, you could use your MCA mm -hmm. to reach out and uh, highlight your issues. So I think it's possible now that you can raise areas of concern and ex expect them to be addressed even if the governor is not is not able to conclusively deal with them they can say this is a national function we will coordinate with the national government and give us a response so those are some of the key successes and we hope that they will consolidate this one of the areas that probably requires quick consolidation dramatic improvement in public engagement mm -hmm. every step of the way and this is an area low-hanging fruit for governors having the second term. 
at, at least in terms of minimum compliance with the law, you know, be, as part of your legacy, do you want to be that governor that animated the constitution at least at the very at the very minimum level, saying that I have set the foundation for public participation, mm -hmm. so that the next governor, if he's to reverse that, people will compare. No, no, no. In so and so's term, we were en continuously engaged. We knew what the government, what the county was doing. We had access to information. We had this town hall participation. What is going on? Right. In, you know, those are the, th the kind of things that governors, if they consolidate, will probably leave a legacy mm -hmm. that people will remember. People remember better what you communicated, right. not necessarily what you did. And let's listen into what uh, Nairobi County Governor Mike Sonko is currently communicating. Remember, mm. he is at the Kencom um, within the Central Business District here in Nairobi County. Let's take a listen. Yes, indeed. It's the right time to reflect on the achievements and challenges facing devolution in Kenya. Despite its many challenges, devolution remains one of the greatest successes of the 2010 Constitution. The establishment of the Council of Governors has continued 